So let's start with a fossil fuel base load plant. Um, coal, natural gas, nuclear, uh, high initial capital costs. Uh, the minimum, so uh, these plants uh, will generally be built under very long contracts because they have high initial capital costs. They have a large minimum efficient scale. So you wouldn't build a really small nuclear plant. People are trying to figure out how to do that, but uh, it's fair to say it's going to be a while before we have uh, small modular nuclear plants popping up everywhere. Uh, for coal and natural gas combined cycle units, the minimum uh, the minimum sensible size to build them is quite large. So we think about these as being large, generally baseload power plants, although with natural gas you tend to get some ramping associated with them. Uh, they tend to have low variable costs. They have low heat rate. The large natural gas plants are going to have low heat rates. Large coal facilities are going to have low heat rates relative to smaller plants, relative to natural gas peakers. So they'll tend to have low variable costs. Uh, these plants will generally, as I've already mentioned, have a high capacity factor because we expect to run them as baseload resources. And they're dispatchable. We can choose when to run them. Now, of course, with a coal plant, we have to take into account the ramp time. We have to, have to take into account the minimum amount of time, the, the minimum time it takes from startup to the time the coal plant can actually generate. So there are all kinds of things we have to take account when we're thinking about dispatching a plant that's designed as a base load unit. Uh, dispatch will tend to be smoother rather than ramping up and down all the time. Uh, because some of these plants adjust faster than others. Coal and nuclear are slow, and GCC units are pretty quick. Peaking units, combustion turbines, diesel generators, and I have <laughs> at the very, uh, the very last batteries, just because batteries are coming on so quickly. Um, we want to be thinking about batteries now because the uh, cost of battery technology is coming down so fast that we need to make them part of our thinking about the next generation of generation assets that we build. So we think about batteries as part of peaking strategies or as part of uh, uh, behind the meter demand management strategies and batteries are, uh, battery production is ramping up very fast and the number of implementations of large uh, mass storage of electricity in batteries is uh, happening very quickly all, all around the world. So peaking units tend to have low initial capital cost because they're built in small modular increments. A combustion terminal is really just a jet engine on a concrete skid with a plug hooked into it. So it's, you can build a, a combustion turbine um, a peaking unit for a relatively small capital investment. Now, and so its, min, it's, its minimum efficient scale is quite small. Uh, on the other hand, these units have high variable costs because the heat rate is high. And because the heat rate is high, the amount of fuel used per unit of megawatt out, per unit of electricity generated um, is going to be high, and so the variable cost of the plant is going to tend to be relatively high. Uh, these plants usually are going to have a low expected capacity factor, generally something less than 30%, meaning if you were planning to build a plant you would run more than 30% of the time, chances are you would probably want to build something else. But if you need a plant that's only going to run a very short period of time, then uh, peaking units are one of the uh, are, are what you might consider. Um, they have very they can be profitably operated at quite a low capacity factor. And of course, the great advantage of peaking units is they adjust very quickly to follow the load. <laughs>